Hello again everyone and welcome back again for another video and Happy New Year too. Uh, I cleaned up my office a little bit, uh, tossed away the beer cans, the celebrating's over, I wired up our, uh, organized my wiring up a little bit. I figure I'd clean this up and so we can start our next project for the new year and what that's going to be today guys is going to be another Dell Inspiron 660S. Now I talked about the 660s before you can check that out video on that video out on my channel um today though what we're going to do is we're going to do a case swap on this 660s um pretty easy swap to do uh you know you've seen me do the regular 660s several times i've never done a 660s and i kind of wanted to get my hands on one and uh <clears throat> that opportunity came uh, actually, when a kid got a hold of me on builds.gg, and he was actually asking me about a graphics card for this, if I had one for sale, and uh, I, I do, of course, and I said, well, yeah, I got one. I said, but, uh, you know, I, I, you know, what's your budget? And he told me what it was, and I said, well, tell you what, I said, uh, let's do this. Um, send me your, your uh, Dell Inspiron here, and uh, let me play with it and work my magic on it and for that same you know budget that you're using on the graphics card i'll give you not only the graphics card but a uh, nice little upgrade on here make some interesting content so people can check out the 660s and making this one into a nice little gaming computer so that's what we're going to do today guys is we're going to take the 660s and we're going to turn it into a uh, gaming computer now i've already done a little bit to it um i flashed the bios to the latest updated BIOS, the A13, I think it is, if I remember right, maybe it's A14, I don't recall right offhand, but anyways, I also upgraded the CPU in this, I put a Core i7-3770, here's his old one, I took that out, here's the old memory stick, uh, it was a 4 gig stick, um, I have 8 in here for now, we're going to bump that up to 16 on here, but uh, I need to get this out of the case first so uh let me get this out of the case and then we'll we'll switch over to the uh, case that we're going to be putting into and we'll talk about that so let's cut this scene here and see you in a sec all right so the board's been swapped into its new case and <clears throat> excuse me the case that we're using today is the muse Tex, i guess that's how you'd say that mk7 um we're doing this in white i was interested in this case um kind of because i've seen it everywhere i've seen it on ebay seen on newegg seen on amazon and uh looks like on amazon it's one of their best sellers and um it comes with an optional uh let me get them back here i have them stuffed where did i throw them oh i can't remember where i put them um i got the one with the 200 millimeter fans and uh I disconnected those and uh, tossed those back to the side there. I'm probably just going to throw those out. Um, they run on the standard 6-pin, um, but it's a proprietary, and I didn't want to hack that one like I did with that uh, last HP I worked on in my last video. Uh, so I was just like, nah, I'm not going to mess with this because... Uh, I'd, I'd rather go a different direction with what I'm doing today with the board that I'm using um, because I wanted to show you guys some uh, PWM stuff and that's kind of where I'm going to focus today is PWM. So I didn't really want to deal with the six pin stuff so uh, I ditched that entirely from this case and I replaced it as you can see with deep cool fans. Um, I like deep cool stuff. They're they're nice and quiet. They're nice and bright. Um, let's take a look at the inside here at this board, and you can kind of see what I've been doing to this. This let me let me change my light here so we got a little little better perspective here. Um, let me find something to point things out to you. Uh, we'll start with the Wi-Fi. I changed that to one that's got a Bluetooth controller on it. Uh, here you can see an add-in card. This is a USB 3.0. Now, we kind of had no choice but to do that because um, if you're familiar with this case, you would know that it doesn't have any USB 2.0 ports 
on it on the front it's USB actually let's take a look at that top here so I can show you this so you know what I'm talking about and you can see this for yourself let me shine my light up here all right so yeah we've got power button we've got a reset button we got a LED button two USB 3.0s and then in, of course our uh, audio so no USB 2.0 and of course you're, if you're familiar with this board there's no you know USB 3.0 uh, header in there, so that's actually what I'm using that for now if you wanted to um, It's probably under my screwdrivers and stuff here. Where'd that card go? Here it is um, if you wanted to um, You could put something like this in there instead into that 1x slot now this here will actually hold two This is a little 2242 or also it'll hold the 2280 type uh, SATA drives so you can actually expand your storage because of course you only have two uh, SATA ports there to put drives in so that's another option if you don't want to add the USB 3.0 and you don't care about that and don't mind that would be to add something like this for more storage but uh, I think more storage is kind of silly on, on something this old uh, unless it's absolutely important to have that extra storage you know um, but anyways moving along um, as you can see I'm taking advantage of this case's vertical uh, bracket on here for vertically mounting the GPU and I had to put some PCB feet on the bottom here and they don't give you nothing to mount anything on here so uh, that's kind of a negative part of this case but uh, it looks like you can very easily uh, vertically mount the GPU which is kind of important in this build today because um, as you notice, we're doing a lot of wire crossing around here. We got junk hanging out everywhere. Um, if we had like the video card sitting in there, we just see wires and junk hanging everywhere. And I kind of want to hide that. And a good way to hide it is by using the uh, vertical GPU uh, bracket here. Uh, another thing we're doing down here, you can see this uh, right here. This is an LED or uh, RGB. Uh, one second here let me pause this real quick um i bumped my keyboard and it, it went to the netflix thing anyways uh <coughs> what was i saying oh yeah this is an uh rgb uh bracket that goes behind your motherboard now uh the dell 660s motherboard obviously isn't uh your regular micro atx size motherboard i mean it is considered micro atx because of the way it extends out this way uh but as you can see um it actually it only has you know like you know the two slots here it's almost like an itx size where it's you know would cut off like right here but it's just a little bit almost like a dtx size if you're familiar with that um this is just kind of a really oddball looking um uh, motherboard in general so if you use something like a standard um micro atx sized uh, rgb backplate like i'm using here it's uh it's going to protrude a little bit there and one of the ways that i'm going to cover that up so that uh, that protrusion doesn't really show as much and look tacky is again with the vertical mount so that's why we're doing a vertical mount here uh now trey if he's watching this right now he's probably like whoa <laughs> cool but uh yeah that's not all i've got more to talk about here uh when it comes to the 660s that i want to cover um and that's going to be this right here this uh pump you guys obviously it's an aio um i'm using a specific brand of course i'm using the corsair h115i um it's 280 millimeter uh, AIO and I actually am running a six pin fan right here which is an up here brand uh, 140 millimeter for a kind of a push pull right there on the one spot uh, but anyways um, the rest of the stuff needs to be controlled PWM now, now the reason I'm using uh, this brand specifically and this model specifically is because of the back here and let me turn this around real fast here so you can see this yeah, where are they here they are 
these two little guys right here, these uh, PWM control things right here, are something that uh, come in very, very handy. Uh, the, the, the pump itself is connected to the CPU uh, PWM uh, port up front. And then uh, through software, that's actually how we're going to control the PWM here, uh, which is actually a little bit nicer than what a stock motherboard can do. Uh, you know, because we'll be using software for one thing. So if we want to, we can, you know, manually adjust the temp or the uh, speed of the fans in this using the uh, Corsair software. And that's kind of the whole point of using it uh, with this uh, AIO. Otherwise, if you try doing another AIO, um, you'd be doing like splitter after splitter to share the same PWM signal. Um, doing it this way, we've actually have three different PWM signals that we are reading from. One's going to be from the pump. One's going to be from one of the channels on the uh, fan thing on the back of the pump. And then the one's going to be from the other controller. So what we can do is use one channel to run the two fans that control the AIO and use the other channel to control the other three fans here. So what we're going to have is a reading on the AIO pump uh, fans coming from one uh, reading on the screen and then the reading from the top fans is coming from the other so you know we kind of get a little better idea of how our fans are spinning even though we only have just this one little header up here for plugging in a fan pretty cool huh it's kind of a neat little trick and i i think it's probably the best way to do this i mean it takes up a usb port to do that which we can hide up here um like i said um what we're going to be doing is kind of hiding it now i've got some cable extensions that I'm going to use and let me pop it out real fast here so you can take a look at it. I'm using some red stuff here and that's also if you think about it going to hide the way things are if I position it right just like that so uh, that kind of gives you an idea of, of what I'm kind of going with here uh, I want a, to kind of give this one a little more better PWM control. But uh, let me go ahead and keep putting fans in and keep building. And then uh, I'll blab some more here and we'll continue on. Alright, just to show you how this is progressing so far. Um, it's The fans are all installed now like I wanted to. I don't have these ones hooked up yet for the PWM. We'll go to the back there and I'll show you that before I do it. But um, we do have this fan plugged in here. This is just the regular 6-pin. So obviously we're using a 6-pin controller to get this going. Um, and then another thing, uh, you can see our... Uh, extensions in there kind of covering everything up tell you what let me let me turn on this light here maybe so we can see a little better put a little spotlight in there all right <clears throat> so you can see the cable extensions in there kind of covers everything up um here's our vertical mounted gpu it's looking pretty good in there now here's some feet that i had to put on there because i didn't like the way this was just hanging down there with nothing holding it and supporting it uh, i don't really care for that and, and it, it kind of made it kind of flimsy because there was nothing really holding this to keep it steady so what i did is i put some feet on there um with some sticky stuff right here just to kind of hold this steady and uh that way it kind of holds that in a little bit stiffer than what it would be normally I, I think that uh worked out rather well and looks rather well um so and i also have the rgb strip Oops, let me angle that down there i have an rgb strip right there on the bottom and then i did my usual hack like i do on these with the windows and i put an rgb strip here so this is going to light up too um it's too bad there's not enough gap in here to do a push-pull because, you know, my, my fans are actually installed up front here on that. But, yeah, there's there's not enough gap in there to do a push-pull, which would have been nice. It should have been just a little bit more. You can see it. Uh, 
so I only got one fan going on in the back of there but that's all right you know it's it's a 140 millimeter takes up a lot of room there and shows off a lot of sparkle and that's what I do but anyways let's look at that uh, RGB back plate there you can see that now let me turn off this light and I'll turn off this light you can see the RGB back plate on it which looks pretty neat and I love using RGB back plates on white cases like this um, it just gives it a really cool effect now you can see it kind of protruding the, the the back plate on the bottom there but it's not something you really notice unless you're looking for it because the RGB kind of reflects on the wall because if we back it up here and just take a look at it straight on that looks pretty decent here so yeah that's that's how we're progressing so far now i didn't put anything in here no decals or stickers or nothing like that i'm gonna leave that blank for trey to do uh he can put it in uh whatever he wants in there but let's go ahead around the back and look at that rgb a little bit i want to talk about that a little bit and i want to talk about that pwm um how that's being done on this because you know as you recall there's only one uh fan header on this motherboard so let's take a look at that back all right taking a look at the back here you can see it's an absolute mess but this is actually a, a lot easier than what you might think um let me simplify this real quick right here these sets of wires right here this is the sata lead that goes into the pump and this is the pwm fan headers uh one's marked one this one of course is the second channel so that we know which one's which on channel one here on the pump i have it connected to this itty bitty little uh deep cool splitter that comes with the fans that i put in here and i've got just two fans hooked on there these are the fans that are connected to the water pump uh radiator uh up front here and then on the other channel right here I've got another little simple PWM splitter that are controlling the other three fans there. So in channel one, the RPM there feed coming in is what's going on on the uh, radiator. And channel two would be the other fans that are going on here that now they're all the same brand same type of fan so whichever pwm uh signal it's it's getting off of one fan you could more than likely rest assured that the other fans are should be spinning at the same rpm uh if it, they are uh built properly and run properly that's uh, how it should function but that's the pwm in a nutshell off of one um fan header on the motherboard now the fan header on the motherboard as you recall like i said um what's plugged into there is the rpm pickup for the pump not the fans so we're actually monitoring and controlling pwm for the fans in software using the corsair iq stuff just using that simple method with these two leads here and then the power being fed in here see so we're not drawing power from the motherboard to feed our fans our power from our fans is actually coming from this sata so yeah this is a great way to do it very very easy very very compact we can just take these and stick these up on here tuck that all in piece of cake guys now next part is the rgb which is this is what i'm using here this is a ds lettuce controller of course you know you can get these from uh lots of other brands you know uh easy diy fab asia horse and and uh all them other guys have uh some something similar now the six pins are nice because they're so easy to expand with if you use the proper um uh, adapters for them now what i'm using on there is two primary types here one is this one right here which is exactly like the hack that i've shown but this is the uh, commercial version of it that you would actually pay for i uh, got these from aliexpress is six pins to uh three pin converter and then i also have one of these which is just a basic uh three pin to jst and i'm using the jst on those rgb strips 
in the front there so uh, I needed to convert that over so that's all I'm doing is just taking you know six pin to JST to get that to work and then all the rest of the RGB that right that uses the uh, three pin stuff I just use the regular three pin adapter in here now the deep cool fans also use JST so obviously I'm using JST now I could also use the uh, RGB hub if I wanted to or if I wanted to I could take this and I could run each fan in a separate channel um, it depends on how many uh, wires I want to put back in there and, and uh, how complex or how simple I want to make the RGB uh, setup on this. So this is this is pretty nice. I can get a lot of RGB devices out of this. Now right here, this is plugged into that switch on the front uh, that controls RGB. So well, we'll be able to control the RGB with the, the button on the front there, and which is uh, a lot better selection you'll 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 notice when we do like our final on this and i show you this it's a lot better selection of rgb uh it's a lot nicer working than the uh stock stuff was but uh yeah that's our rgb there now this here also if you wanted to will integrate with the motherboard and well actually i'll include that uh cable along with this in case he upgrades this motherboard but yeah you can integrate this with your motherboards uh rgb as well so this is a nice little controller to use and with all those adapters and stuff i'll actually be able to stuff this controller actually down in there hide that out of the way and uh this back will close up real nice here but uh uh enough of my babbling here i'm gonna go ahead and finish up my rgb here uh get this thing all uh tucked back in tied up and uh closed up sealed up and then we'll have a final look at this and then we'll go to the screen here and we'll look at the specs on this uh upgrade to this uh inspiron 660s see you in just a second all right guys let's switch over to this computer now and uh take a look at the specs on it according to task manager let's Large that up there and go to performance under CPU. You see we are carrying the Intel Core i7 3770 CPU, 16 gigs of RAM at 1600 megahertz. Disk zero, we are running a Samsung 860 Evo, one terabyte SSD. Disk one, we are running a Western Digital Blue, one terabyte drive. Also, uh, yeah, one terabyte. Graphics, we are running an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 960. Very nice um, for what this computer is. Uh, a lot nicer than what it was when he brought it to me. Uh, looking at a couple specs here, we'll start with Crystal Disk Mark. Um, this was the read on that uh, Samsung Drive, 556 on the read, 522 on the right, which is pretty impressive. Uh, taking a look at that WD Blue, we got a 188 on the read, 188 on the or 179 on the right. Not too bad. Uh, let's take a look at some uh, Heaven benchmarks here. Um, running the standard test in Heaven, we got 64 frames a second average with a max of 139. That's respectable gaming right there. Um, you know, it's not super high-end gaming, but it is respectable, um, which is what we were looking for, what I was shooting for in this um for what his budget was you know you can go with higher graphics cards in here like you know the rtx and what have you but for what this computer is i am i think we're we're running some really good benchmarks here for uh gaming so this will be a pretty decent gaming uh setup for trey which is i think what he was shooting for um what else we got here we also have i'll show you the set bench here what our readings were in that real fast uh, scored a 3603 on the multi-core and on the single core it scored a 759 uh, so yeah that's that's not you know, horrible I mean you look at this and and compare that to the core i7 1165 g7 uh at a lower wattage um that's at what 15 watt i think 
Yeah, 15 watt. It, it compares about the same, and this CPU is, gosh, how old now? 10, 11 years old? So, you know, not much has really changed over the years when it comes to progress. Let me have some coffee here. On CPUs, is not as much as people think they are. I mean, some strides have been made, and you know, with the clocks and what have you, and the, and the efficiency of the CPUs. But uh, yeah, I mean, they're they keep up with today. The 3770 is, is a good uh, chip. The 3570, also, you know, the Core i5 3570, they're great for you know old Dells like this. If you want just a you know a mid-level gaming computer. And uh, you don't have a lot of money to spend. You know, you can find them, the, the 3570s, pretty cheap on eBay uh, to upgrade in here. I just went with the 3770 because I actually have a couple of those. And uh, I actually have another, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Dell 660, the regular size one that has the four uh, PCI uh, slots in it that uh, I might do uh, another build in and we'll show that on my channel but uh right now it's just the 660 s um anyways so that's the specs on this uh you know as you can see it is running windows 8 i just did the the, the regular uh uh rufus hack on this to get windows 8 and or windows 8 windows 11 i'm sorry why do i call windows 11 windows 8 because windows 8 was horrible this came with windows 8 and uh <laughs> yeah anyways so I did the usual Rufus hack to get Windows 11 on this. Uh, you know, it works no problem, as you can see. Uh, we're running Windows 11 on here. <coughs> so, yeah, I mean, it, it, it. this whole thing performs really, really good. I'm actually really, really impressed with this 660S. Um, I think it looks really, really cool. What I was shooting for here um, was to hide the fact that it's a 660S. I mean, you know, you wouldn't think a little bitty little, you know small tiny tower like that would have such capabilities in it or could be so cool but it can and and uh that's what we did today um and i kind of want to see some of you guys do the same thing i mean not the exact same setup but you can you know expand on your little if you got one of these little uh 660 s's or a 660 they're they're nice you know, i mean they're older computers but you can do so much with them um as we can see in the specs there uh check out you know other videos on youtube to check out like core i7 3770 with like the gtx 960 and see for yourself what kind of frame somebody else is getting because it'd be kind of stupid for me to even show i mean i could load up fortnite on this and show you some screenshots and, and shit and play it and you show you some frames but man there's, there's so many other videos out there from people that are actual gamers that know how to tweak the settings on their gpus and maybe the cpus or whatever and uh get the most out of it but, uh, yeah, that, that's who you check out. Don't check out me. I, if you want to come to me for something, you know, I'll show you how to do RGB shit, and that's about it. <laughs> but, yeah, all right. So enough of my babbling here. Let's take uh, a final look at this thing before I uh, box it up and get her sent back off to Trey. Uh, so let me cut this scene here. I need to switch my keyboard over. We'll cut this scene here, and uh, let's take a look at the uh, build. All right. Uh, so I've had my morning coffee. I actually have a little bit more to go. I'm almost awake, but uh, yeah, we are done with this. I was actually done last night. I just wanted to uh, crash for a while before I started filming again. Uh, we got it set to a red theme right now. Um, as I showed you earlier, we can actually take the button right here and change the colors in it. Tell you what, let's let's turn off the lights for this light show. Um. I can go ahead and press the buttons up here, like I said, to change the effects. Um, one other thing I can do, this, this setup comes with a remote control, so I can actually cycle through these um, with the remote control as well, and uh, also go to different modes of lighting on the RGB. Now, you're going to notice here, let me, let me go to auto here, can't find it in the dark. There's a rainbow. Um, you're going to notice the Corsair, let me turn this so you can see this, is not 
spinning. Now that is the only thing that we don't have control of with the remote control or the buttons up on top. Um, that For that we actually have to go into software and I can actually go into the Corsair IQ software here and change that to whatever Corsair offers. Um, like right there we can do like a color wave effect. Um, visor effect. Uh, well, let's do a spiral rainbow. So, yeah, that actually gets controlled in software. So, that's the only thing. I mean, e e there's some adapters you could get to also control the RGB in software, but uh, not an expense I was going to put into this project, <laughs> honestly. But there's other ways to expand it. But uh, as you can see, what we got going on now is um, actually pretty cool here. <laughs> Does some pretty good uh, stuff. Like maybe do like a rain effect. You can get some really neat stuff going on there too. Uh, but yeah, this this is pretty neat looking here, and we can see. Let me let me scroll go down here so you can see the bottom here. Uh, you can see the um, light strip here. You can see the around here the uh, window where the power supply goes. Uh, yeah, a lot of cool stuff going on in here. It's kind of wild. <laughs> and uh, you know, like I said, what I was shooting for. Let me turn the lights on was so that you look at this and it just doesn't really dawn on you let me turn this here guys that it doesn't really dawn on you that it's a 660 dell or 660s excuse me you know one of those itty bitty little what they do with the casing Ugh. let me grab it you know it was once Ugh. this thing <laughs> you know this itty bitty little computer right here is now this uh cool looking gaming setup oops hopefully i didn't bump my microphone there um is this cool little gaming setup that's pretty neat now like i said i'd like to see some of you other guys do this because i you guys have asked me this uh, this is probably the number one thing I get asked on my channel of all the shit that I cover is the 660 and the 660s. You know, I get some snide remarks. I get some, ah, you don't know. And I'm just like, you know what? I, you know, I, maybe I don't know. Impress me. You do it. You do better than me. That's the whole purpose, man. I'm, I'm, I'm not doing shit to show you guys how to do things awesome and perfect. I do it to inspire you to, to hope you go out there and you know what? Do a better job than I do of what I could do. And, um, uh, that's that's kind of what my channel's about, guys. Um, really, it is. It ain't about you know me because I fuck up all the time. It's about you know inspiring you guys to go out there and do some of these cool things because I know you guys think these are cool looking, and you know I, I, that's what I do. I want to show you guys how to do it, and that's probably what we're going to be doing most of this year is just you know cool builds and you know talking about them along the way that's just my thing that's what i do but uh that's this one guys this is again dell inspiron 660s that tiny little uh tiny little machine has now got some uh, really cool specs some really cool features you know like i said it's all usb 3.0 up here uh, of course, you know, the I, I tried the uh, reset hack, and that actually didn't work on this one. So maybe it's just the regular 660 that the reset hack works. But uh, on this one, it didn't for me. I'll have to check my wiring again. But uh, this one's a wrap. Um, don't know what we got coming up on the channel next. Who knows? Uh, that's, uh, maybe it's a new one because uh, I got a couple new ones I kind of wanted to do. But uh, maybe we'll do an old one next time. I don't know. We're doing something. But uh, I'll get to the next build when I get to the next build. Don't know when that's going to be. Um, that's the uh, beginning of my babbling for the year. I'll check you guys later. See you later, and have a good one.